Hi guys, it's Becca from Stilettos Fine Art Studio and I'm coming to let you know that tonight I am working on a pastel drawing class for my pastel customers. So I know that I have been promising them for a while that we we're going to work on some different colored papers. Besides black, we often do our drawings on black uh, construction paper and this could be done on that too. But I thought I'd try some stuff out because the people have to order at home. They're going to be looking for pastel paper. This is a Strathmore pastel paper. And it's really neat because it comes in different colors. So there's white. And there's a tan. I believe there's a tan. There's a cream. This is a cream. You can't really see it well. But there's tan. There's blue. We're working on blue tonight. And then there's some green in there. Some different and some taupe I believe so you can see a couple different shades so pastel paper is nice you can use watercolor paper if you want just know it's grittier so it's gonna hold the chalk more so blending isn't always quite as easy but it's actually a little easier to blend on here than it is on the black construction paper that we use it's just that the people who normally come here are used to the black paper so but I'm gonna show you today I don't know what we're doing I'm uh, we're gonna wing this one I'm gonna make it up as I go which I do quite often a lot of times I'll work from a photograph and that is always a lot of fun I love working for photographs but we're going to have fun with it and I think uh, I'm gonna go look at a couple of things and come back we might work off of an acrylic painting turn an acrylic painting into a charcoal drawing or a pastel drawing okay so you can have a lot of fun with these my recommendations is to if you're not sure what kind of soft they're soft pastels not oils if you're not sure what kind to get send me a message I'll um, give you a couple brands that are good to get some are not some you do not want to have some are really cheap quality and they won't work well and you struggle with them so doesn't mean that you have to spend a lot to get a decent quality pastel they range in a lot of different prices but I can give you a couple that are in the less expensive range that are good to use a lot of my workshop customers already have them because they come in the classes which is awesome I knew there was a reason we had to offer them like that and all you need to do is you can see I tape it to a board now, if you are in your home, you might want to put like a plastic tablecloth down. It gets dirty, it's dusty, or work outside on a nice day or work at least. I always recommend a tablecloth, even when my son does it at home. Even if we had hardwood floors or something, we would still put a tablecloth down because it's easier to clean up. Not, not on carpets. You don't want to do carpets. They, it will make a mess. So your hands are going to get dirty. Wash them off. That's good. You can use toothbrush and your fingernails if you want to. It just happens. But it's worth it because you create some really super cool art when you get done. So my hair, you may see me playing with it a little bit. It was hanging down on my face. I've been here all day making videos. So I used <laughs> the old teacher thing. I used pencils to hold it up. We'll see how well it holds. If it doesn't, I'll take it down. But in case you're wondering what's in my hair. <laughs> Necessity. Necessity. Make sure you do think you figure out solutions that you didn't know were there for. <laughs> Alright, well, we're gonna start it in a few. Okay, so I'm here right now and I am going to be working with some pastels. Picked out my colors. I have some blues, some pinks, some different shades of blues. I always recommend more than one shade. I got some purples, I got I always recommend lights and dark. So I got light and dark pinks. I got some light and dark oranges, yellows, purples, whites always wait <laughs> and we're gonna get started here so let's see I moved this a little bit closer so you could see so I'm going to do this is gonna be a little different we did a really beautiful sky with some butterflies in it and some grasses and we normally do a lot of foreground but I think we're gonna do this a lot I'm thinking of maybe making it beach scene with a beautiful sky, maybe a butterfly or something. We'll see. I think it's going to be pretty. So I'm, I'm kind of combining a couple different drawings that we have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with a lighter blue. I'm going to decide where my horizon line is going to be. And I'm kind of thinking like right about here. So I'm just going to give myself a faint line. Okay. Now when you draw with pastels, you always want to draw with the flat side. Okay. When you're doing your background. Only when you're doing your background. When you're not doing your background, you can do whatever side you want. Back here, you're going to do the flat side. We're not going to push real hard. So for this guy, I'm going to come, I'm just going to sweep in come across this line. See how I got a bit of an angle going here? And I'm not filling everything in. 
Like I'm getting some rough shades in here, but I'm not filling it all in. I'm not pushing hard either. If you push too hard with a pastel class, so that was like a light blue color. If you push too hard, what will happen is it will, honestly, it will get, it'll push the paper down and you'll have a little hard time with it. So we're gonna turn another light on for you. I'm gonna take different colors with it. Your color choices truly don't matter. I wanna layer some colors because I want a lot of pretty colors and pretty clouds in my sky. So I got a little deeper blue and I gotta decide where I want that. I'm thinking right in here. So I'm just looking, I'm overlapping some of the blue that's up there. Okay, I'm not interested in separating my colors. I'm interested in pulling them together. Okay. When you first put a pastel down, you start drawing. It doesn't look the greatest. I'll be honest with you, it looks a little funny. So, and then maybe I'll come in yeah, and grab some pinks. I want to bring some pinks, but I look more like a red. Okay, we'll bring that in over here. A little bit of color in this way. So we're going to get our rough colors on here, but you have to realize that we're going to be putting some oranges in shading. Okay, we're going to be adding blending and shading. I'm just, I'm, working. I'm just bringing a few colors in here and there. Some purple. Oh, that would be black. We don't want that. Let's see. We got deep blue. It's perfect up here. Just kind of bringing some colors in together right now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with my white. Okay. And I'm just going to start blending with my white. I like to blend with the white first. So when I say blend with the white, I'm just kind of helping to mix some of my colors with the white a bit just to blend them. Now this is a really simple, simple sky. I'm going to get it going now. I'm going to bring my hands. I'm not going to blend with my tips and my fingers. I'm going to use this part of my knuckle here. So I'm just going to come back and forth. I'm going to start in my lighter areas first. I'm kind of sweeping my hands because I want the sweep to come out. Now you look at that sky looks a lot different now, doesn't it? I'm not pushing hard and I know I'm definitely going to have to come in here and add more color. Okay. This is just an initial blend. I am putting that black right in up there. I didn't want that in there. Woo! And this is falling. Sorry about that. Our makeshift studio doesn't has our portable can, um, easels, so... Yeah, not quite as sturdy as what we would normally use, but they work a lot easier for doing this. But look at look how cool that looks already. I blow it off. You're already we're already getting a really neat, neat, neat look going here. So our next step, we're going to add some clouds. And I might want to add a little more pastels in over here, okay? Because I really want to kind of bring this together a bit more. So I'm going to kind of bring in some dark colors. And I'm going to use the edge of this. A little bit and I'm gonna go in circles so look at I'm doing little circles to the side I do some longer streaks these are just longer streaks and I'm, I'm using one color at a time bringing in some some basic cloud coverage in here maybe even my dark I like to use the darks first so you can do little circles and then you can bring in Now, if you look at the angle I have going on here, this is important. Little circles will give you fluffier clouds. The angle is important because if you don't use that angle, you, it won't look realistic. So I'm going to start with this. I'm going to take my fingers, and if, it's, if I need, if I want it to be streaky, I'm just going to streak my hands through it like this. Okay. Some of them I want to be streaky because I just wanted that soft, soft, subtle touch. Over here, I might go in little circles. Little circles are going to make them look fluffier depends on the look that you want. Little circles. Okay, little circles. We'll fluff them out a bit. No, this isn't the only color we're going to put in here. I'm just getting some rough clouds going in there, okay? They're actually quite bold. If you want to soften them, little circles. And the colors are dark because we're going to add some light colors over top of them. Now I might come in with my pinks right in here. So if I bring some pink, if it doesn't like to come off, you can always rub it on the board. 
I'm doing little circles. A couple streaks. Just toning down a little bit of those colors. And then I'm gonna run got this pretty yellow color here. Let's make it earthy yellow. There we go. I kind of want to bring the sun in right here. So I'm going to start overlapping some of this right over my pink. So that's why I like pink. I didn't really even blend my pink too much because I wanted to bring this yellow right in over top of it. But remember, y'all do make green. Always remember that. Now with this type of paper, you don't have to blend as much as we would normally blend on regular pastel paper. The paper grit actually holds the chalk very nicely. So once you get that initial blend down, you can start layering the colors in. So I'm using the edge of the chalk and I'm pushing down a little bit harder. So I'm starting to get some really cool clouds in here. And you see how I'm curving them. Can you see how I'm curving them? I'm just, I'm using this edge right here. Okay. And I'm pushing down back and forth a little bit. Kind of shaking my hand around. Okay. Can you, if you can, hope you can see that. I'm trying to hold my hand down so you can see. Shaking my hand around. I mean, I'm going to hold it. You could use this side too. I recommend a longer edge, but this way you can kind of see the direction my chalk is taking, okay? So I'm going to do it this way, but I do recommend you do it this way, the long one, okay? So look at I can pull it right up. All right, so we have, let's jump back into this. Now I'm going to come in, I'm going to bring some whites in, because I like to bring some whites in to kind of dress up the skin. I'm going to do it the same way. I'm holding it this way. And I'm just overlapping some of those yellows. And I'm bringing some white clouds in. And I'm not blending as much as I would. Now, you can blend a little. So I can say you can't blend. I'm not blending as much as I would on the black backgrounds. Yes, I guess you can. But I'm kind of adding the highlighted Here I might blend. I'm using more of the flatter side up in here so that I can get a little softer look. Soften this up a little bit just to bring a little light in. See, the white brings in the light. It makes it look like everything's shining down, like the heavens are shining down on the earth. So, beautiful sky. Super pretty, super easy. These are actually a little bit easier sometimes to use. And then on the black paper, because you don't have to try so hard. Now, another way you can do clouds is you can take this edge right here. Okay, and you can come and you can do circles if you want a more of a circles. And then you can bring your finger and lightly just soften it. So you can get some fluffy clouds going on in there too. So I'm going to have a few fluffy clouds up here. So I'm going to do little circles. Little circles. I'm going to take my pinky very lightly, very, very lightly, and just slightly soften it. All right, and maybe I'll do, it looks a little bare over here, so maybe I'll do that again. Little circles. Can you see little circles? Kind of stretch it out here. I might poof one up here. It's a big spot. Let me poof some up. You see the little circles, little spirals, and then I just take my pinky very lightly. Maybe one more right here. And blend them out. Now I'm seeing another bare spot over here and I can do this. Let's do one more. Let's do a big one. Circles. Now you take your pinky and you just real lightly blend it out. Okay? You did as much as or as little as you want. I really like having a lot down here because it's going to look like the sun is just rising up over the horizon. All right. There, we just created the most beautiful, beautiful sky in a few minutes. Didn't take too long. Now, don't rush. Okay. There's no rush. Take your time. Do this every day. If you don't, take your time. 
there's no speed record. If it takes you three hours to put this on, I'm just kind of softening up some colors here on the side. If it takes you three hours to do that, it takes you three hours to do that, and that is okay. It's no big deal. But um, when I do pastels, I get them all over my face. <laughs> it's always kind of funny. Now what I'm going to do is, now we got this horizon line here. Okay, and i got to decide what to do with this. So this would look super pretty either as a water waterway which I think I might do because water is actually kind of fun to do I like doing water you could do it as a grassy plain you could do like a road coming down like this you know a road coming out and then having some stuff in here but I'm thinking I'm gonna do water so what I'm gonna do I like to use the color some of the colors that I have in the sky but I am going to add some gray which I have to go and actually grab because I want to tone the water down a little tiny bit I have a, like a light gray here. So I'm going to start, I'm thinking right here, I'm going to kind of come across, I'm going to do a little darker blue. I'm going to come straight across. Now I can't go any lower. Now look, I'm not going to do too much in here. Okay. I'm going to bring some blues down like this. Just a little bit there in the middle to start with. Because I have all this yellow going on in here. All right. So I'm going to bring my yellow in first and foremost. A little on the blue is okay. Now look at I'm gonna blend that out. I don't want to put too much yellow and blue together because yellow and blue make exactly green. So when I'm on the horizon line, I like to use this long skinny edge, the not the flat part, but the the sharp edge, because that's gonna give me a nice clean, clean horizon line right there. And then when I pull the yellows in, I'm pulling them back and forth a little bit because they extend all over. Okay. And then I'll come in. Let me bring. I have a lot of pinks in up here, so I'm gonna bring some pinks in here. I'm gonna overlap. Look at. I'm pulling the colors and I'm not just doing a straight line. Like that's a straight line. That's not how we do it. Okay, I'm not doing that. I'm just. I'm pulling some colors in. Got a little bit of the pink. Pink as a nice buffer for the blues and the yellow. All right. Then I'm gonna bring some light blues in. Bring a little bit here in the yellow, just not too much. And I'll pull some in here. Look at I'm coming right over this. Dropped my pink chalk. Then oh, let's see. I like this purple color. I want to darken some of this up down here a little. on the edges. I like my edges to be darker. Not the bottom a little darker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring some white right in here. I'm going to do the edge right along there. I'm going to pull some white in into the colors to water it up a little bit. Water has a lot of weight in it. And I'm going to bring a little gray in. Not too much, but some gray down in here. And then I might bring some more light blues. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to take my hands here in the center. Don't forget to wash your hands. I'm going to start with the light colors first. And then I'm just going to pull those colors out and I just do a nice even blend along the top there. I don't know if I want this to be so pastel -y down in here, but I want a nice blend started. All right. And you can get kind of fancy with this. You can come in and you can decide, you know, I'm going to have a little bit of a beach right here. So I can come in like a rocky coastline. I'm thinking of a rocky coastline. But um, before we do that, we want to kind of Bring some white in. I like to bring the white. I'm thinking I want to darken some of this up too. There's a lot of dark going on here and super light down here, which is fine, but I think it needs to be darker. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to add some darky storm stuff in here. Darken this up. Okay, and I'm going to 
gonna just take my time and lightly blend it back and forth. I want my water to be peaceful, not too, not too stormy. My sky is so pretty. I just want to kind of have a nice watery way in there. And then I'm going to bring some whites in. So I can bring the white in a little folder. You can do like long streaks. Look at lines. You see how I'm doing that? I'm not even really blending them. I'm bringing them out. And they're not, some people like to do this. Line, line. No, don't do that, please. That doesn't look right. Do, do them horizontal to change them up. Look at, they might spread out down here. You can use the edge. Okay, when you get down here, let's we'll soften them out a little bit. Okay, leave them a little bolder back there. This is a simple pastel. This is for people who haven't really done this before. You can come in and do less. And I can come in with a little bit of the blues. Underneath some of that. And then I can just... Okay. And I can bring some darker colors in doing the same thing. You can just play with it. So just don't blend, blend, blend. Look, I'm not going over it too much now, am I? I'm just bringing in some depth in. Oh, grab the black again. You don't really want black down here, I don't think. Put a little blue over that. Okay, yeah, we got a nice cloud. Nice little beach. We do want some black, but just not right this very minute. Okay. Now, I can come in like this now, and I, and I don't have, with this paper, it's really neat. I don't have to blend this so much. I can just lightly blend when I think I need to, but I can add some texture in here into the water too, which is kind of fun. So I think I'm going to go with the fact that I might have a rock right here. Alright. So, we might as well put one there. I made a mistake. I'm going to dry with a corner here. Now look at rocks kind of tend to do this. They straighten out. And they have that weird shape to them, okay? But look at we're going to come fill this in. I'll fill it all in black to start with. And I'm just going to lightly soften it up. And then maybe I want to put another one right here. Maybe this one's going to be a little different shape like that. Now, I don't like how they look just on their own. I'm actually going to grab and put a little color into them. I have this orangey color right here that would look beautiful. When you put it over the black, it takes on this brown. So it's going to look like, so I'm just going to kind of come in and make it look sun-kissed a little. Like it's coming down the edge. And I'm not blending this so much. So I might come in with a little bit of the grays. Because rocks can have texture. Blend it in with the greens a little. So I've got my rocks in here. I'm going to grab pencils. I like to use charcoal pencils. They have white and black. They have pastel pencils and everything, but pencils are actually a nice way to do some details. So look, I'm going to come in and I'm going to sharpen up my edges a little bit with the black. Get myself some detail going on in here. It'll... Okay. And I might even come underneath here a little bit and just shade down a little. 
just get your shade down under the rack a little and then just blend. The next step is going to make it look like there's some racks in there. So then I'm going to come in here. Look, I'm going to grab my pencil, my white pencil, and I'm going to come along the edge. Water likes to lap up on a rack. See? I'm going to pull it out because that's going to make it look like the water has lapped up along the rack. I'm using the side of the pencil, if you can see. Can you see? I'm going to go slow. And I'm bringing it out past. Now look at it. I'll bring some little ripples down in here. I'm not doing the tip. I'm using the side. But this is a nice pencil because it creates beautiful lines. And you can come up in here, too. You can come in and you can go, okay, I'm going to do some lines here. This is a still water. Like I said, this is an easier one to do. I can do lots of fancies with waves and everything. This is for people who haven't really done this before. You can grab the pencils. If you recommend the pencils, but you don't have to have them there, not a necessity, okay? That's simple just on its own. You could just do that and you could call it a day if you wanted to. I actually think to bring, I'm gonna make it look like there's just a little piece of land right here. Just the edge of it coming out. I think we need some brown. So we're going to bring a little bit of land out right here. So I've got like an orangey brown. We just want to change up the color a bit. Okay, and I'm going to come in with some, ooh, I dropped it again. I'm going to bring a little bit of my black in over top of it. Not too much. Side of a yellow. And maybe my pencil here. I want it to look like the hint of the Yeah, we're gonna cover a lot of that, so I just wanted a little bit there. Even bring it up and over this one a little bit. Actually, that was a probably nice there. Let's bring a little bit of it up and over. Because this, this is in the foreground. So we can cover that up a bit. And then we definitely need to bring some darks in. real strict over here with this because I'm going to bring some grasses and everything. So what I'm going to do is grab a few green. I'm going to grab my bit of green because I don't know what colors I want. I like to use an earthier green, but I'm going to kind of use the edges of it. So I want to create some grasses coming up. So I'm going to just use the little point on the edge. I'm going to start up here and I'm going to curve it down. So look at that is not the only color grass I want to do here. I'm going to put a couple in. I can use the long edge too. I like to use the long. And look, we're going to crisscross a few, okay? All right. So that's, I don't want to do too much of that. It's very light. Now I'm going to use the long edge on this. So look, and I might come over some of those. I might put some short ones in. You see what I'm doing? I'm just creating some different pieces of grass coming up with some different shapes. Now if you got one that's really dark you can come in and you can bring some right over top of it some lighter stuff and you can do some shorter ones down here to help make up the difference. I'm a big fan of using browns. Not all grasses are green. is one of the reasons I didn't think we needed too much to do too much down there in the bottom. You can crisscross some of these. Um, 
And then the final, I can come in with my white. Look, at you can come in with your white. You can highlight a little. You can bring some white grasses right in. Down lower. Make it look like they have highlights on them. I like to use the pencils for that. I love the dark pencils for down lower. Look at it. doesn't look like you have black lines on there. It just adds some depth down at the bottom of your down to the bottom of your drawing. Okay. So I mentioned some butterflies. Look at I might even come out here and just put a few little little dots like the grass seeds are headed out. Not in all of them, just on a few. I could do a few white ones too. When we do other classes, I teach you how to use um, a razor blade to do uh, some really pretty flowers. We really shave the chalk. Okay, so there we got a pretty little grass scene going on there. And as I said, you could leave it as this if you wanted to. But I'm going to do a butterfly. I think I'm going to do a butterfly right here landing on the branch. So I'm going to draw just back and forth. Looks like a stick. And then I'm just literally going to... Give it a couple antennas, okay? There's, there's my, it looks like a praying mantis at this point. <laughs> All right, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my white pencil to draw my lines. So my butterfly, uh, butterfly wings, the first, the wing in front kind of curves like this. Can you see that shape? And then it comes about right here, and it just curves down. And then you can kind of draw a little V right there, and then it's gonna have another one that comes up like this. And bees and so this one's going to be sitting there so you have to have that shape if somebody doesn't I'll send the final picture so you can try to copy it but I use this so that I don't I don't mess up the color choices that I'm using so I'm trying to think I think a pretty pretty color butterfly let's try pink so I'm gonna use the edge and I'm gonna just kind of shade back and forth I'm gonna do this back wing first and I'm just coming in if you can see See how I'm coloring it in? I'm using the corner and I'm coloring in. So you can lightly shade that a bit. Okay, now the trick to this is that this part down here has to be lighter than this. So we can do a couple things to make that happen. All right, we can first come in with some purples on the top. So look at it. We can change the colors up a little bit. More than one color, I'm actually gonna put some purples in the whole thing. More than one color will always help it blend. Now I'm going to come in with a little blue up there because the blue is quite a bit darker. Not too much. And then, here's the part that I really make it pop. I'll use some whites down here. I'm not blending so much. I'm just doing lines and I'm overlapping a lot of colors. So I'll bring some pinks back in. Maybe some darker pinks. What we do up here is not so important as what is down here. This has to be light. All right, now, because we did darker up there, we're gonna start with the dark pink. We're gonna kind of hook this out. And I want you to see something. You see the strokes that I'm doing? You see those directions? That's the direction you want your wings to go. You want the bottom's gonna be, you're gonna curve your, your stroke the weight, the angle you're drawing, you're going to curve it up here. And it's going to flatten out in here. It's going to be dark here at the top. It's going to be dark here at the bottom. It's going to be lighter in the middle. Okay. So then I'll come back in with my, maybe I'll come in with my purples first. I'm going to bring some purples here in the middle. The pastels, the more you layer, the more the colors will blend pretty and you won't have to use your fingers so much. Okay. So I got... Some colors in there. I'm going to come up with my dark blues right here because I really want this edge to be dark. So I don't per se want to use black. Down here, I'm going to use some darker down here too. And then cover it with some pinks. I'm going to do my white. The white is really the 
the key factor here. The white does a lot of the blending for you. I can change my angles and we're coming to this light section. with my pencil and to clean things up. Now you could come in and you could do little spots in your butterfly wing. That would actually look really nice. Maybe a couple in here. It is so simple. See how pretty? I'm sitting on the I can see it through the camera. You might not be able to see so much. I might extend this out a little darker so you can definitely tell it's sitting on the on the um the grass, I can't talk. And then final step, I'm gonna come sign it. That's it. We call it a day. Super pretty. Super easy. Great, great one to learn on. And um, I think it's a success. So let me know what you guys think and we will get this posted and Give us your feedback. If you like this type of stuff, hit subscribe, hit the like button. I'm covered with chalk. <laughs> and, you know, share. And we will be posting more. We'll do some more. We'll do some more advanced. This was a great one. Even for my regular students who are at home who don't haven't done this in a little while, this is a great way to start. And you can do this on the black paper. So don't let the paper fool you. Just, you know, this was, this was blue paper. You can do it on white paper. Um, it doesn't work good on like on paper that's really smooth, like Bristol paper wouldn't work, vellum wouldn't work, line paper wouldn't work. You really need pastel paper. You could do watercolor paper, and um, you just need some texture for it to hold. The, the smoothest I do is um, black um, construction paper, but that is really smooth. You got to do a lot of blending on that. You don't have to blend as much on this. I think my my students are ready to go to this one. It's a little different, so. There it is. We'll call it Butterfly Haven. <laughs> All right, guys, have a great night. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for joining us. And you do art at home. As always, if somebody needs this lesson and they can't afford it uh, due to the current circumstances, message us and we'll work something out with you. Uh, we're doing lots of free kids art lessons. The adult ones we weren't posting, but if someone's in need of them, then by all means, you are welcome to them. So just remember, we're closed down, and this is it. This is all we got, so please don't take advantage of that. But if you need it, then it's available for you.